Hello, uh, my name is Grant Tejan. Uh, I am a uh, associate professor of criminal justice at uh, St. Ambrose University. Um, I specialize in, in criminology. Um, uh, and I uh, teach a wide array of courses from criminological theory to criminal justice to uh, policy and practice to uh, uh, corrections. Um, and I study uh, and specialize in studying like uh, education as a means of uh, overcoming uh, you know, the stigmatization and limitations of, of criminal justice system contact. Um, so, uh, to move on, uh, you know, uh, I'd like to discuss, you know, what is the most important thing for the public to know about the, uh, you know, the Chauvin Floyd trial and story, the entire event from, you know, from my perspective as, as a criminologist, right? And I consider myself a critical criminologist, right? I, I critique and ask questions to systems of power in, the, in this country and globally too. And I think these systems should answer for their actions. And that's what I want you to take away from this is this event is not, justice for George Floyd. Justice for George Floyd would mean that he is still alive, right? Um, this event is primarily about holding Officer Chauvin accountable for his actions, right? Um, thus, holding an institution accountable for its actions, right? Um, so, you know, and, and broader, I think this trial is a confirmation of the massive failure of many components of our criminal justice system here in the United States um, from a very broad systemic perspective, right? Um, uh, that it is, is wrought with, with many issues um, in regards to discrepancies in how it treats different groups of people based on such things as their race or ethnicity, on their social economic class, or maybe on their gender too. Um, so, um, you know, m moving further along, uh, I think a big idea here to push is that the, the, I would like to take the, for the public to think about is beginning to humanize all people who've been impacted by the criminal justice system, irregardless of their race, what they have done, or their criminal backgrounds, right? It's irrelevant as to whether they have previous, you know, a previous criminal record or whether they resisted arrest. Uh, they should be all treated the same under the law and all given the respect that all human beings deserve. Um, and that's how we are supposed to respond and do business in a democratic country, right? That's the issue at hand, protecting people's human rights irregardless of who they are. Thank you.